I know you're gonna dig this. Get, get, get funky with me. When the day starts out, lift up your head and shout. When it's gonna be a great day. Time to get going. Kellogg's waits for you with vitamins, iron to help and you have a great day. A very good part of starting your bright new morning. Or snacks, flakes, or bran, or jacks with Kellogg's, you'll start a great day. Any one of these Kellogg's cereals is a nutritious part of this complete breakfast, and that includes milk, juice, toast, and spread. When you start with Kellogg's, we'll be there to help you say... It's going to be a great day. A very good part of starting your bright morning is Kellogg's way. So what did you have for breakfast this morning? Hmm? Cereal? Perhaps. Perhaps you did. If you did, one of the two gentlemen that I'm here to see, well, I'm actually here to see three gentlemen. Probably has something to do with your breakfast. Maybe not, but the inventor of cornflakes, John Kellogg, is buried here. His brother is buried here as well. And their main competitor is buried here as well. That's bizarre to me. And the connection between the two families is odd too. I'm gonna to tell you all about that. First, I gotta find the grave that I'm looking for. And I'm gonna drive around because I know that it's surrounded by a little fence. So I gotta look for that little fence now the third gentleman that I'm trying to find, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it, but I'm gonna do my best. But that little fence I'm gonna find. It's a bit of an old, this is Oak Hill Cemetery in Battle Creek, Michigan, which is right kind of halfway between Detroit and Chicago. And I saw some tall buildings off the distance. I assumed, I've been to Battle Creek before, but never really stopped. And I thought Battle Creek was a really small kind of place, but there's tall buildings. And I'm amazed, I'm from a big city and I'm amazed when I see a tall building. I don't know why. But lots of older graves here, as you see. But far in the distance, as I was coming in, coming around, and all the way down there too, lots of newer ones. Let's find the Kellogg family. And I did see one Kellogg, uh, Kellogg family when I came in, way off in the distance. And I, walked, and I went up to the monument, but it wasn't the one I was looking for. So there's other Kellogg's here. I don't know if they're related to the same Kellogg's. I'm looking for a certain specific Kellogg. And I think this must be the only one. I don't know. It is indeed because you see there's a Kellogg's emblem right there. Oh yeah. And there he is. No wait. So look right here, there's a lot of Kellogg's. But this was the gentleman right here, William Keith Kellogg. This is the founder of Kellogg cereal. Right there. Hester Kellogg, Gertrude Kellogg, Sarah Kellogg, Ella Kellogg, William Keith Kellogg, Irvin Kellogg, William Keith Kellogg. Now, I'm not sure if his father is here, John Preston Kellogg. The first, but I can't seem to find him. So now I'm looking for his brother, John Harvey Kellogg, and he's buried here in the cemetery too, but it's in a, a flat grave like this. Not exactly sure where he is. See if I can find him around this area. Well, I think they'd be he'd be buried with the family. But let me tell you a little bit about the Kellogg's and what they did. 
John Harvey Kellogg, the father of the prepared breakfast food industry, was born on February 26, 1852. He lived for 91 years, mostly on a fresh air and vegetarian diet that he advocated for clean biological living. He was a physician, a nutritionist, an inventor, and a medical missionary. Now, he was also a firm believer in the social gospel, which was a Protestant movement that tackled social problems with Christian ethics. For over 50 years, John Kellogg ran the Battle Creek Sanitarium, which offered free medical dispensaries, free baths, free laundries, and a visiting nurse's service. Kellogg's Sanitarium Health Food Company provided special foods as well. So as a nutritionist, Dr. Kellogg wanted to change America's eating habits, especially when it came to breakfast. But his original intention for the cereal was not to fill hungry bellies. Instead, he wanted to rescue humanity from a plague of debauchery. He wanted people to stop having sex, including self-pleasure. In the late 19th century, Dr. Kellogg made it his duty in life to stop sexual desire in its tracks and wrote several anti-sex books. He believed masturbation, in particular, would bring about an onslaught of diseases. It's also rumored that, as a married man with 12 adopted children, he never consummated his marriage. He came up with a list of different foods that the sexually driven population could eat to stop themselves from feeling frisky as he thought that meat and certain flavorful or seasoned foods increased sexual desire and that plainer food, especially cereals and nuts, could curb it. So Dr. Kellogg and his brother Will eventually came up with cornflakes. But then they had a dispute because Will wanted to add sugar to it. So they separated and Will formed the Kellogg Company. So William was as militant in his views about sex as his brother was, but next time you're having cereal in the morning, don't think about sex. And now I just see this right here. What the? Kellogg right here. See that? And there's a few more Kellogg's here. So maybe this is where my brother is, John Harvey. We're in the sanitarium. I don't see him around here. These are definitely more Kellogg's. Hmm. Let's see. Well, no more Kellogg's here. So Kellogg's there, Kellogg there, Kellogg way over there. That's the founder of Kellogg's cereal right there. So like I said, this is another Kellogg's one, but I'm looking for John, oh. Okay, so I did surprise myself here on the other side of the Kellogg. Uh, so like I was just saying, this is getting confusing now. Right over there, when you come in, it's hard to find, but we're at the very back of the cemetery right now. That, where that fence is, that's William Keith Kellogg, the founder of Kellogg's cereal. And there's another monument here to the Kellogg family. And here is John Harvey, right here. All right, so now I'm gonna try and find the grave site of Charles Post, who started Post Serials. That's gonna be difficult to find, but I know that he's in a, uh, a building, like a small white mausoleum that's here, I guess with more of his family members inside. So now I'm gonna to try to find that building. Oh. The office of, of the cemetery is small and it's, it closes early, so I made it here after it was closed. And there's not a lot of information, just online it had a couple of things about Section A, plot zero, uh, like that sort of thing. There's, there, when their streets are, I mean, streets are marked, but when it's not marked on the actual street, like down there, anywhere, there's no like markings to say what section you're in. Kind of left on your own. So, let's take a look, see if I can find it. I take time to stop and look at other graves that I don't know, catch my eye. Obviously the giant monuments always are gonna catch your eye, but there's other ones. I find newer ones tend and, not necessarily flowers, but newer looking ones 
tend to catch my eye because they're a different design, a more modern design. And when I see something that it, I can tell already it's a young person just by the nickname E-Hop and Brothers for Life in the picture. And it's uh, kind of reminds myself of what I'm doing, why I do great videos sometimes. Because <sighs> I'm honoring, I hope, the best way I can. People pass away and people want to pay respects, like I've said many times. I can't get to these graves. But there's so many, I mean, all these people. I feel a thousand graves here. We led each individual life. Their life meant so much to them and meant so much to their family. This gentleman lived to 40 and that's a young age to pass away at. But yeah, it just really makes you, it's how I always say, it's the younger ones that always get me. That's for sure. This is a nice 10 to 2 grave for Ehop here, Eric. The flowers, it's very beautiful. You rest in peace, man. You too, Carl. Want a ball? Have a ball. Have a ball free with special seals from Post Kids Cereals. Have a volleyball, baseball, basketball, football. Save for one or save for all. Collect proof of purchase seals from Sugar Rice Crinkles, Super Sugar Crisp, Crispy Critters, and Post Alphabets. Have one or have them all. Have yourself a ball free from Post. And here we are. This is the Post family right here. It is uh, quite impressive. To say the least. Take a look. And you can actually see inside of the uh, crypts inside there. Wow. So Post was born in 1854 in Springfield, Illinois, and he was a salesman, a manufacturer, and an inventor of agricultural machines. In 1891, at age 37, he had a nervous breakdown. So he moved to Battle Creek, Michigan to be treated by the world famous doctor, John Harvey Kellogg. So at John Harvey Kellogg's sanitarium, he claimed to cure people miraculously with a vegetarian diet, daily enemas, and abstention from sex. But Charles Post's behavior was so bizarre that Dr. Kellogg put him in a wheelchair, told him never to eat meat again, prescribed a diet loaded with fiber, gave him daily enemas, and took all his money, eventually leaving Post with no money whatsoever. So when Post couldn't pay for his medical advice anymore, Dr. Kellogg kicked him out of the sanitarium. Post decided that he wanted to be just as rich as Dr. Kellogg, and in 1892, he persuaded several local people to lend him money and he set up his own sanitarium. Now, he remembered how badly he missed meat, so he allowed his clients to eat meat. And he invented a kind of a fake coffee substitute called Postum that said would cure heart disease. And after that, he invented grape nuts a cereal that he claimed cured appendicitis. In 1901, 47-year-old Charles Post divorced his loving and faithful wife and ran off with his 27-year-old secretary. Dr. Kellogg hated Post because of all the nasty things Post said about his products, and Post responded by suing Kellogg. Eventually, Battle Creek, Michigan was not big enough for the both of them, and Post moved down to Texas, where in 1914, he committed suicide at 60 years old. Yeah, so there you go. Two cereal giants and a medical pioneer who invented the term sanitarium. He tried to encourage people to live a long and healthy life and how to do it. All in the same tiny little cemetery. Looks like, um, what I can tell, I came in that way. I'm just trying to figure out now. So if you're ever in the Battle Creek area, you want to come in. Just go right straight up. You can't miss the Post family right there. And you're gonna come in, you're gonna go past a bunch of graves that say Kellogg. Those aren't the ones. 
make it left after about the fourth drive in go all the way up you'll find that fence and you'll find the other Kellogg monument there too but yeah there's a I was about to say decoy Kellogg's but I'm assuming they're related but it's in a different part of the cemetery you go past that one just if you're ever in the area you want to take a look but if you can't I hope this helped you to uh, give you a little bit of uh, information about these uh, men and their interesting lives because it's pretty fascinating stuff when you dig into it and you really read a lot about it very interesting crazy 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 stuff <sighs> hmm this is uh i'm happy i did this came out of my way good hour out of my way to just to do this without very much information to go on in terms of how to find it you know how to find the cemetery but not the graves all right did it peace so all the people buried here and the Kella family and the post family and hope you and yours are having a great day i love you all peace out General Mills, but it's all they had. Oh well. And I don't have milk. Dry cereal it is. Cheers. <laughs>